Hello everyone, my name is Mana Yasha from Dream Vision Creations. I want to thank you for joining us now on part 3 of how to build your own DVC small hoof shoes. The first thing we're going to do today is actually start on the duct tape pattern. So going over basic materials here, what you're going to need, uh, the, the materials you're going to need are going to be cling wrap, it doesn't have to be glad, it can be the cheap off brand if you want to, or even plastic grocery bags if you have those, some duct tape. Scissors you don't care about but are sharp enough to cut duct tape because they will get gunky from the duct tape glue. A permanent marker or a pen and a box cutter to make it easier to cut off or you could use scissors. It all depends on what you're more comfortable with. And if you really need to, just some straight pins for sewing. All those would be good. So we're going to jump right into this. The easiest thing that I find with doing any duct tape pattern is to actually preemptively start ripping some tape and lining it on the edge of a table or a cabinet or something that you don't care it's going to get possibly sticky. Don't use fancy furniture because it might rip the actual enamel paint off of it. I'm going to start ripping off about two to three inch pieces of tape and start lining it on my table here. You won't need too much because a foot is relatively small and you'll be actually flipping this pattern from your right foot to your left foot so you don't have to worry about taping up both of the feet, it's just one. For the particular effect that I'm going with, the fake digigrade leg look, it's actually best to use a smaller, a uh, shorter fur on the top layer here where it's been foamed out and then use a really long fur on the very back of the heel. I should also mention this is a good time to use the pins. Just put a couple tucking right here behind where that foam is. Kind of squish the cling wrap down so it's matching up with the shape of the foot. Because if you try to tape directly across this, you might not get this curvature properly. And you want to really accentuate that. Cut a little piece down here and add it to a section on it right there. It's back covered. I have heard that some artists actually just put duct tape directly onto their foam, which you can also do too. I've, I've seen it in action. It does work. I was actually highly impressed when I saw uh, Sky Pro Fursuits do this really quick duct taping technique, and I was like, oh my gosh, how did that work? <laughs> but I still prefer using my cling wrap. I don't like the idea of possibly the duct tape um, sticking to itself and then ruining the pattern you just spent so much time taping up. You can see I put a pin right there on both sides.
foot is all taped. And you really start seeing the shapes now. And the illusion that was created here. Alright, so depending on your fur that you want to use, will also depend on what kind of pattern you want to do. So I'm only doing one color, one type of fur. I can literally just get away with doing one big piece over top of here and just having a seam here and around this edge here. Same thing goes for the back fur. I can get away with just having one piece wrapped around this and sewing this edge and everything to be glued down around the heel. If you want a better effect for the flowing fur, instead of having going straight down, um, you can do two pieces of fabric. I'll do a line here and then have the fabric uh, facing this way and I'll give you more of a directional flow and it'll look more natural. Since I'm wearing this for the Renaissance Festivals and I'll be using NFT fibers in the back heel, I'm not that concerned so I'll just do one piece and keep things really simple for this tutorial. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is actually mark out my line for my different fabrics. So I'm going to go around the edge here and just do a line where it meets up with the long fur and the short fur. And I'm just going to add a little extra flair to it. I'm going to bring it up just a tad bit higher. Only a little bit, because otherwise it'll be a separate piece of fabric. And like I said, I want to keep this super simple. That cute little curve in there. Okay, so this is where my two pieces of fabric are going to be separated. And the next step is to do the heel. So I'm going to have some line coming down here. And I'm also going to mark where my top of my foot is. Okay, now my next step is I'm going to mark what the different furs are. So I want to have short fur, I want to have it pointing towards the hoof. I'll do a little arrow down. And I like to also reference which side of my foot this is. This is the inner side, so in. Also do that in the long fur, in. And I'll label this out. Out. Like I said, since one piece, it's going to be super simple. Most of this is going to be relying on darts. So I'm just going to put little lines here to match up this heel. And I'm going to put double hash marks down here since I know it's going to two pieces of fabric. And that's where my fabric is going to meet up in the two pieces. And again, this really helps out with lining up your fabric so you don't get any puckers or twisting or any kind of crazy things like that. And I'm just going to do this in one piece of NFT, so I'm just going to have an arrow going down. And I'm going to write on it long. And I'll write on this one short. Seal. Seal is not seal fur, it's a type of fake fabric. Oh, um, also got to mark off where this fur lines up with my hook. Okay, so that's the pattern, and you can see I marked it in on both sides. You see my little hash marks for lining up the fabric. Mark also marked this one's long, this one's short seal. Next step is to cut this off, so you gotta be a little bit more careful. Um, you can either use a knife or you can use scissors, I can show you both. This is me using a knife. I pull it slightly away from my dummy, from my foam, so I don't actually like, cut it. I'm very carefully slicing this. 
And you can see I'm being so careful that I didn't even go through the next layer of bling wrap. I had a lot of people ask me, how do you determine if you need darts or not? Well, the most simplest way I can describe this is you want your fabric to lay, you want your pattern to lay as flat as possible on, um, on a table or any flat surface. So the biggest thing is seeing what areas are puckering and not laying flat. So you'll notice right off the spot, this is popping up and it's definitely curved. So it's not laying flat. So what I do is I find the highest point of that curve and I figure out, okay, I think we'll need a dart right here to get this to lay flat. So I'm going to put a single cut right there and see what it does. That single cut made my pattern lay flat now. I could put a second one in right here, but since I know my fabric does have a little bit of stretch to it. I'm not worried about it. So that single dart made the difference. So now I look on the other side and I see what's going on. This one's sticking up much higher than the other side. So here's the highest point. I'm going to put a cut. And that's laying down pretty good on this side. But this is still puckered up. So that tells me I need a second dart. I'll put a second one right there. Now I've got my pattern laying completely flat. So they're putting those two darts. And what happens is when you go and sew these pieces of fabric together on a little pizza, it'll cause it to curve again. Surprisingly enough, there's not that much curvature along where the foam meets the fabric, but I do see a little bit of puckering. So I'm going to go ahead and put a dart right here. Now it lays flat. And then this side, it's got some puckering right here. So I'm going to put a little dart there. And it still has some right here, so I'll put a second dart right there. Now my pattern's laying pretty darn flat. So that's it. That is how you design pattern pieces. There's really only going to be two pieces for each foot. Super simple. So once this gets sewn together, it's going to be as simple as the pattern onto the hoof and then gluing around the edge here, gluing around the bottom of the shoe, getting this curvature covered, and then hand sewing to the liner on the top. Or you can machine sew if you got if you got those kind of skills of doing very small circles. But I will show both methods in the next tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon.